Welcome to everyone. This is the topic about <clears throat> how we are controlled and what we control and what we don't control. It's an interesting topic. We have a few quotes we're going to read. And so I'm going to ask Chaitanya Dasi, you can, you have those quotes? You can put them up? Yeah. Okay. Go to your chat and you can see. Shiva Prabhupada, Kijay, Panchakapa Turavyas Chakra, Prasindu Vyavacha, Patitanam Pavanavya Vaishnavya Namo Namaha. Mukam Karoti Vacha Alam Pagulam Gayate Girim, Yakrapa Tamaham Bande Siguru Dina Tarinam. This verse I chant before class. Some of you may know, it means that by the mercy of Guru, even though one cannot speak, by his mercy one can speak, one cannot walk, by his mercy one can walk, one cannot see, by his mercy one can see stars in the sky, one can climb mountains actually, it says. Not just walk, but climb mountains. So I always find it important to uh, chant that verse before mm -hmm. class. So Krishna can empower me to say something which is useful for you. Krishna can empower me to say what you need to hear, even I may not know that. And we offer obeisances of the Vaishnavas because we always want their mercy. By their mercy, everything is possible. So that's the idea. And of course, we always pay obeisances to Srila Prabhupada because everything we do is on his order. Everything we do is by his mercy. And we only act because oh, he told us. We only do what he told us to do. Otherwise... We don't act on our own. Hare Krishna. So I'm going to move back a little. If I don't move back, you can't see my beautiful t shirt, right? But the microphone's in the way, isn't it? What to do? This life is like problematic, right? <clears throat> To hold a mic like this. Anyway, you can see it now. You know what it means. You'd be happy to know that this morning before class, I recorded, it's an hour and a half recording with about, I think, 14 different meanings of the holy names, and I Explain each meeting, only takes a few seconds, each meaning every two minutes. So you just put this recording on <clears throat> and it gives you a meaning and then you just begin chanting and then two minutes later a new meeting comes and so you can meditate on the meanings. I was asked to do that for the uh, retreat we're doing in England, but you'll be able to get that recording. So I did two and one has Nothing, just the meanings, and one has Prabhupada chanting uh, softly in the back, if you like that. So we have a Japa channel. Maybe we'll put it on the Japa channel, because Japa channel is a good place to go for tools, insights. There are many tools and insights. The only problem is just like someone may have many tools in their garage, or if you're in England, you say garage. But... Um, I don't know what you say in India, but you may not use those tools, right? So I think some people, you know, have a lot of money, buy all the tools they could ever possibly need, but they may never use them. So that's another, that's a topic for another class. Anyway, we'll begin today's class by reading this. This is from the Bhagavatam. By a scrutinizing analysis, we find that everyone is controlled by something else. No one, therefore, 
can be the true controller, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. This is supported by the Shastras. Ishara Parama Krishna, the Supreme Controller is Krishna. Krishna is never controlled by anyone, for he is the controller of everyone. Sarva Karana Karanam. Sima Bhagavatam 8.8.20. You know, in one sense, we could say that there are certain teachings of Krishna consciousness which we have to spend our whole life trying to imbibe. We, of course, can intellectually understand them pretty much from the first time we hear them, uh, if we have faith. But when we spend our whole life trying to realize them, trying to make those teachings real for us in our life. And this is one of those teachings. So <clears throat> if, if we were to say, do you know that Krishna is the Supreme Controller? We would all say, you would all say, of course. Do you know you're not the Supreme Controller? You would say, yeah, I, you know, I can hardly get out of bed. What can I control? We would say that. but if we look at our lives, we don't live our lives as if we understand that. Of course, we know we're not the body. We, we don't live our lives exactly all the time like we're not the body. So that's why this topic is important. Like the topic on separation, we went over and over and over again, the basic principles, and sometimes <clears throat> that's necessary. And if you go over and over and over again, <clears throat> at some point, it's like, oh, something dropped from here to here. It's like, you know, we're like pushing it down for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and then you may wonder, why is that? Is it because there's something wrong with me? Is it because I'm resistant? Is it because I'm not purified? Is it because I don't really want to be Krishna conscious? Is it because fill in the blank? I'll leave that for you to decide. But I would say it's all of those. But at least we should understand that whatever we're hearing it needs to go beyond intellectualization. Intellectualization is so easy because you don't have to do anything. Krishna is the supreme controller. Yeah, so <clears throat> where are the Pakoras? Yeah, that, that's fine. Great class. Where's the sweet rice? And then our whole world falls apart. And like, Krishna, why did you do this to me? I'm like, wait a minute. I told you you weren't the supreme controller. You missed that verse? Have you ever noticed how you think you understand everything until your world falls apart and you realize you don't, you don't understand anything because you collapse? As your world collapses, you collapse with it. That's a test. How much do I understand? Right? Like, how strong a fighter are you? How do you know until someone you fight somebody? Yeah. So... I have some bad news for you. Brace yourself for this news. I know this is going to be hard for you. You cannot be God because his position is already taken. I'm sorry to tell you that. I know that's depressing news. I know you had big hopes when you came to the material world, but sorry about that. Um, you're too late, you know, he was already there. He created you. If you created him, yeah, maybe then it would be different, but it's already too late. However, as we know, Mahaprabhu came to feel the emotion of Radharani, which means what the devotee is experiencing is even greater. So don't worry. It's not a bad deal that you're not God. You actually have a position, you can get, attain a position, and at least you can attain an experience he can't attain. So don't worry about that. So 
the lesson that I'm not the controller, that that is the big lesson. And and I've often said that this is really the the litmus test of someone, whether they're a devotee or not, of someone who's spiritually advanced. How much can you let go? Not that you let go of everything, because we need to control things, especially our mind and senses. We need to be responsible. But how much can you let go of the things that you're not supposed to control, number one, or the things maybe you are supposed to control, or would be good if you could control, but you can't? How able, how easy it is for you to say, okay, whatever, we have to deal with that because it's beyond my control. That's, that's a real test. And I think a lot of times we don't see that as a test. We just see that, well, that's the, you know, the crazy Indian bureaucratic system, why everything's taking a long time. And you're trying to control the Indians and tell them, don't do it this way. Do it like we do it in Switzerland. Yeah, well, India is not Switzerland. You probably noticed that last time you were there. <clears throat> so you ever try to control something that's as ridiculous as trying to control some bureaucratic problem in India? where you have to go through four levels of people who are all trying to make money from you. And if you don't pay them, you get no justice. And well, that wouldn't happen in Switzerland, but it's happening there. It's just the system. Nobody's paid enough. That's how they make money. And so whatever. And, <laughs> and Abhinav comes up and just says, just pay him the 500 rupees. It's only $8 in your money. You, you spend that on, you know, like stupid things in your country, and they'll they'll let you through. Yeah, but on principle, it's, no, it's just the way it is here. Yeah, but it's wrong. It's just the way, just accept it. Yeah, we need justice. We need to change the system. Okay, we'll change the system tomorrow. Just give them the 500 rupees. We'll get through. <laughs> okay, you ever been in a situation like that where it's like you're resistant because you have your reasons? And it's totally out of your control. There's absolutely nothing you can do. And it's completely ridiculous not to give them the 500 rupees, right? So I just, I, just, I want to, this is an example only to make you aware of what Prabhupada's saying, because it's philosophical, we tend not to look at it practically. Yeah, Krishna's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I'm not. Lord Shiva isn't. Lord Brahma is. I got it. I got it. I can give you the shlokas, aham sarvasya prabhava. I know lots of shlokas. <clears throat> first verse of Bhagavatam, it's all there, right? You know the first verse of Bhagavatam? Janmaryasiyataha. It's all there. I know it all. And then you're in line and this and that and you just give the guy 500 rupees and everything's cool and you won't. And you scream at him and fight at him. And actually, sometimes you even did the wrong thing, and he's telling you, and you didn't know, and you don't accept it. And you like, so that's my point, and and therefore I say that in in on the path of spiritual evolvement, this is a real key factor to look at in terms of your spiritual health. How much are you able to accept what is beyond your control? Not always easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that even great devotees won't have difficulty with it. But I'll give you a little mantra or a little thought. When you're in a situation like that, it's, it's good to remind yourself that right now, the way the universe is moving, it's not moving the way I want it to move. And all the forces in the universe are moving in another direction. And I want to spin it right, but it's spinning left. And, and at this moment in time, there is absolutely nothing I can do about it. And therefore, I should just let go. Try to remember that. Try to remember that when you're trying to change somebody that you cannot change, that you would love to change. They're going right, you want them to go left. You will never get them to go left in a lifetime of Brahma, but you're still trying. Hare Krishna. Think, think of that. Think of that. 
the universe and all its power and forces is conspiring to make my wife or husband go left. And I hate it when they go left. And I want to try to get them to go right. And I've been trying since uh, we were married, even before that. And he's still, not, he's still not going right or she's not going right. Maybe it's time to like let go. What do you think? Well, Prabhu, I'll think about it. Maybe you, maybe there's some truth to that. I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so I think I've made the point clear that when, you know, you read something like this, it is so shastric, it is so philosophical that we think, yeah, I know it. I mean, if you want, I could sit down and just chant shlokas about how Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the rest of the class. And hopefully you all wouldn't fall asleep or be bored. You're like, I know, he, you know, can you talk about something else? I know he's God. Yeah. But do you know you're not God? I'm not sure about that. Right. Okay. We're little gods. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Chaitanya Dasi. See what Prabhupada says. Srila Prabhupada says, they're talking about incubation. I think it's probably, this is probably in context of the three modes of nature, because sometimes Prabhupada gives the example of the modes of nature like an epidemic or like a, you know, like a virus. And you can get immunity, vaccination, the holy name, or incubation, stay away from the disease. Incubation, so you cannot avoid it. If you have contracted some disease, it will develop by nature's law. Similarly, during this life, you associate with various modes of material nature. And that association will decide what kind of body you're going to get in the next life. That is strictly under the laws of nature. Like someone says, I don't believe in the next life. Okay, well, why don't you jump off the top of, the, of this building and chant the mantra, I don't believe in gravity. See how that works for you. It's the same thing. A Prabhupada would often say, you know, there are laws of nature and they operate whether or not you believe in them. So I think it's it's just very interesting when people say, well, I don't believe in this and say, well, you know, you committed some sinful action. If you don't believe there's a reaction, there's still going to be one. And it would probably be smarter to understand the reactions. Because everything in this world has reactions. And if you don't get caught by the police, there is a universal police. And they have you on record. And when you die, you're going to meet them. So might as well pay your fine now. And avoid trouble later. So this, this is like, this is interesting. I don't believe... Some people don't believe in something which is obvious. It doesn't change reality. Uh, it doesn't change the laws of nature. Don't change because you don't believe in them. Okay. That is strictly, so Prabhupada's talking about you're going to get another body. That is strictly under the laws of nature. Everyone is controlled by the laws of nature. They're completely dependent. But, but out of ignorance, people think they are free. They're not free. They're imagining that they're free. But they are completely under the laws of nature. So your next birth will be decided according to your activity, sinful or pious, as the case Prabhupada said, I don't know if Prabhupada was being humorous or just philosophical. It's quite, it's quite, it is a bit humorous. Prabhupada said, the scientists are working very hard. Their old, uh, ultimate goal, the medical profession, is that we can live a long time. Uh, if they could figure out how we would never die, they would do that. But there would be inherent problems of overpopulation, right? And I don't know. The quality of life, what how it would be if you're, you know, 8,700 years old, I don't know, may not be desirable. But anyway, they're, they're trying to, let's say, obviously, at least extend life. That's desirable. Extend life and extend it in a way you can be healthy. That's desirable. 
So Prabhupada said, while the scientists are working to extend life, material nature is taking their life away. So I think Prabhupada saw it as a major paradox. You're you're trying to create the pill to live forever, and in and in your laboratory, you die of a heart attack. Like, you know. Um, I think Prabhupada's point was, and he's making that point here, that people don't realize how controlled they are. And you know, like sometimes people say, I don't surrender to anyone. And Prabhupada said, but you're surrendered to death. You have no choice. There's no way around it. And, you know, they'll say, but someday, you know, we'll transcend death. Okay, whatever, someday. But today is not someday. Today, you're subject to death. We're all getting older. Um, there's disease. I don't know of anyone who's never been sick. There might be a few people, yogis or something. Old age, I don't know anyone who stopped that. If someone figured out how to stop old age, they'd be quite rich by now because everyone would take the pill. Maybe devotees wouldn't take it, but devotees might think, well, if I stay young then and strong and powerful, how will I ever be Krishna conscious? Getting old is helping me. Um, so there is this, obviously, there is this idea that I am not controlled, I don't surrender to anybody, etc. So when people say that, I think inside, when people told that to Prabhupada, I think inside he would just laugh. He's like, what are you talking about? You, you're not controlled? What? There was a devotee, he wrote a song, and sometimes Hubby plays this song. I don't think this song's recorded. And the whole song is about thinking, um, I think it's, I don't know if I could find it, I have it on. I'm just a fool, but I'm thinking I'm cool, I'm thinking I'm higher than high. It goes like that. And then, and then the, the chorus says, what if the sun doesn't rise? And what if the planets don't stay in orbit? And what if, etc. Then what kind of, you know, what kind of controller am I? Like I'm a big controller, right? And you know, if the sun doesn't rise, if there's not enough oxygen, what if all the rivers? Yeah, and one of the, one of the verses, what if all the rivers run dry? Then what? You know, we're talking about oh, the war, the future wars are not going to be over land; they're going to be over water. Well, I guess the land. Or, you want the water, water scarcity, scarcity. Um, so what if there's no water? Drink your water now while you have it because there may be no water tomorrow. Well, if there's no water, we'll just go to London because we can just put our head up at any time and drink water, right? At least in the winter, maybe not in the summer. Ah, Hare Krishna. So this was one of Prabhupada's main preaching points. It said, okay, you're very advanced. I acknowledge that you have, you know, we're all going to die. The robots will live forever if they don't rust, if they're built of non-rusting materials. And so the robots will continue living. We'll all die. They'll, <laughs> we can make a sci-fi movie, right? Atomic war, the only thing left are robots and look, like, see what they do, you know, and they're like, they're all like the way human beings should actually be. They have all good qualities and, they, and the world becomes beautiful. Yeah, and it was the greatest thing that ever happened to the world was all human beings died. And now the robots are thinking, I don't know if we want to do artificial insemination because these people like really messed the planet up. And so I want to thank them for creating us, but I think it's better they don't come back. <laughs> Anyway, um, so Prabhupada would acknowledge, okay, you've done many things, no problem. You're advanced, whatever. But you're going to die and take another birth, and you can't control that. And what are you doing about it? And what can you do about it? You can't do anything about it other than be Krishna conscious. That's all you can do. Correct? Correct. 
I have I have to imitate the Indians now. Kodak. Is that how you do it, Avina? Did I do a good job? Kodak. Hare Krishna. Correcto. Yes, correcto. Okay, we can read the next one. Our position is that we are controlled, predominated. We are not controller. Anyone who is thinking that I am controller is a fool. Nobody is controller. Everyone is controlled. So if we do not put ourselves to be controlled by Krishna, then we shall have to be controlled by Maya. Two ways. Now it is your selection. You cannot be independent. That's a fact. If you don't want to be controlled by Krishna, then you will have to be controlled by Maya. And if you don't want to be controlled by Maya, then you will have to take shelter of Krishna. Two alternatives. That's all. There you go. That's the essence of this topic. And uh, uh, we're probably going to read another, another quotation. Uh, I heard it on a morning walk where Prabhupada said, there's no question of not being controlled. It's just a question of who you want to be controlled by. So, ladies and gentlemen, Prabhus, it's not a question of controlling. We're all controlled. It's just a question of who's going to control us. Now, you decide who you want to be controlled by, but you can never be independent. If I were you, I would choose to be controlled by Krishna. That's just my advice, right? But unfortunately or fortunately, depending how you look at it, Krishna is going to let us choose. But don't ever, Prabhupada's making the point that this, this idea of freedom is an illusion. Now, let me give you an example. This is not as common now as it was when I was younger. But a lot of people were smoking. And people were smoking because they thought they liked to smoke. But the real reason they were smoking is because the marketing industry, industry convinced them that smoking was cool and it would make you feel good. But I think more like it's cool and prestigious. You know, it's like, you're an adult, you can smoke. Um, and then they, like 20 years ago, they started advertising cigarettes for women. They were thinner. It's like, hey, hey, ladies, you know, 50 years ago, you couldn't vote. 50 years ago, you couldn't do this. Now, you know, you can be like the guys and smoke. You've, and the sign and the ad said, you've come a long way, baby. And they were, the cigarettes were called Virginia Slim. So they were woman size. So it's like, oh, I can be like the men. I can also get lung cancer. Okay, that's cool. That propaganda for women to be like men, you know, yeah. Well, it depends what men you want to be like. You know, the average man, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. So you can be a fool like the other men who are smoking. And so that's why you're smoking. Because some people got together and said, you know, there's this weed called tobacco. It grows wild. It's cheap. It's addictive. If we can just convince people that it's cool to smoke, we can become multi-billionaires pretty quickly. And they figured out how to do it. And then everybody got addicted. And everyone who's smoking is thinking, I'm smoking because I like it. No, you're not. You're smoking because you were manipulated into it and now you got addicted to nicotine. And that's why you're smoking, not because you want to. Why would you want to smoke? It makes it makes you smell like tobacco. Your clothes smell like tobacco. Nobody likes it. The people who breathe the smoke, it's more dangerous for them than it is for you. And your lungs look like a charcoal barbecue. So like, why would you want to do that? It doesn't make sense. You actually don't want to do it. You just think you do. And so now look at your life. And there's so many things in your life that are like that, that we think I'm doing this because I want to. 
when actually we're doing it because we're controlled, either by Krishna or Maya. That's your choice. I'm sorry there's no third choice, like I don't have to be controlled by anyone. That choice is not on the table. There's only two, controlled by Krishna or controlled by Maya, which if you do the math means we're not controllers because there's only two and we're not one of them. So that means we're not controllers, right? Is that good math? There's three of us and two are controllers. What does that leave the third? Not controller. Controlled by one of the other two. Pretty simple, isn't it? Hare Krishna. Um, yeah. Jai Rade has a comment. Prabhupada has a quote on smoking. I was in a class, I think Prabhupada said, yeah, I was in a class. They have a cigarette. I don't know if they have it anymore. Smoking is not popular in America. It's propaganda was made. Um, and so the old movies, if you see like the 60s, 70s, you'll see a lot of people smoking. A lot of the people in rock bands were smoking. It was like considered cool. But now it's, at least in America, in most places, not considered cool. I don't know about Europe. I think it's geographical also. More, There are places where more people smoke. But there was a cigarette, and it was called Cools, because in the filter on the cigarette, you know the end, there's a little filter. Not like a beady. I think the beadies have no filter. It's just like straight. So they have this little filter, and the filter had menthol in it, so they called it Cool. And Prabhupada said, they are smoking fire, and they are calling it Cool. And he was laughing. So uh, Prabhupada used to joke about the stupidity of ordinary people or the stupidity of how we're being, how ordinary people are being bamboozled by marketing. Yeah, you're smoking fire and it's cool. Okay, so Jairati says, I have a particular hard time letting go of not being in control regarding services when something needs to be done and isn't, or other devotees are depending on me to do something and I can't always do it, or I can't do it alone. Any advice on this, please? Okay, let's go one by one. Letting go of not being in control regarding services when something needs to be done and isn't. Okay, that's not a problem, because that's for Krishna. So, this is actually a good question, but this is, I'm not saying this is, this is a good question, but this is the first point you make is not what Prabhupada's talking about. Because, Jai Radhe, if I come to England and something goes haywire and you say, well, I told Prayag to do it and he spaced out, well, then it becomes your fault because it's your responsibility, right? Well, I didn't want to be the controller. Well, in this situation, you should have controlled because that control is for Krishna. So it has nothing to do with false ego. It's all about service. Now, if you go with a hammer to Prayag's house and beat him on the head with it, that's a different thing. But to, to find out that, okay, he was supposed to do it yesterday and he, did, and he didn't, and we need it done today, and I'm frustrated, I'm just taking it under my control. I'm going to do it myself or get someone else to do it. That's service. So it's not false ego-based. And it has, has nothing to do with whether you think you're God or not. If Prayag's doing it and you interrupt and start doing everything for him while he's doing it, yeah, that's different. Because that's meaning I want to control and I want every minute detail to be exactly right. Now, if he's doing it wrong, that's also different. But if he's doing it right and you're just like, you can't sit down and let anybody do things right, yeah, that's a problem. We had a leader once, this is a very funny story. I've told it before, but it's very interesting. He thrives in crisis. He loves to go into a situation where things need to be corrected. And the more chaotic it is, the more he feels useful and needed. And his management style is is um, he manages in a way that it actually creates crisis because then, I don't know if you've seen this, it's very interesting, but he actually creates the crisis. He does, he's not aware of it, but he creates systems that will depend on him so that he can do it. 
So he feels needed. So the systems like they, they're not seamless systems because if they were, he'd be out of a job. So he creates systems that are dependent on him. So one year we did a marathon and he drove everybody crazy completely. And I was a Sangerton leader and they were all telling me he's driving us crazy the way he manages. It's, it's all crisis management. So the next year we decided, okay, we're going to run the marathon without him. And we're going to tell him we got the whole thing together. You can just preach and enthuse the devotees. You don't have to do any management. And so he'd come into the Sankirtan office, and unlike when he was in charge, where, where the phone was ringing off the hook, and things were going chaotic, and devotees getting kicked out of spots, and vehicles breaking down, and people forgetting their lunch, and everything was like just a normal day. Everything was smooth. And I watched him, and he was like, he didn't know what to do. He was so uncomfortable, because he wasn't needed. I mean, he was needed for other things, but he wasn't needed for that. And so that's a problem. Like, would you want to create chaos just so you're needed? Uh, you, you, you need to see Jai Radhe for psychotherapy, yeah. Or Jai Radhe needs to talk to herself about it. Yeah. So, so the first thing you said is fine. Anytime service is of uh, consideration, where you're not going to disturb a relationship with somebody, then that's different. But when it's like, I can't stand the way Gandhari is doing this. She's so slow. If I did it, I would have finished it three days ago. Like, you know, like that. And then, you know, um, now if we need it three days ago, yeah, then something has to be done. But if we don't, it's like, okay, let her take three days. She'll, she'll get every detail together. She'll do it perfect, perfectly. So, when something needs to be done isn't, or other devotees are depending on me to do something and I can't always do it, um, that's the opposite situation. Can't do it alone. Yeah. Um, can't do it alone. Yeah. They want you to do it and you can't do it alone. Not sure exactly how that relates to the idea of being controller, because in that sense, that situation, you're saying, I can't do it. I'm not, I don't have control. So that's, that's good. Um, I think this kind of off topic, because I think uh, a lot of this is about um, accepting service, maybe too much, more service than I can do or accepting service within a timeline and I can't finish it and, and not letting people know. Or um, I think maybe you're referring to that um, it's kind of like a service you have to do because nobody's doing it and no one will help. Um, um, what to do when no one will help. Uh, Ice cream and pizza always work for people who help. Try that. If you come over and do this, we'll have ice cream and pizza. Um, I always think you'd turn, it's all about inspiration. Or maybe adjusting what we can accomplish. Um, that's my, my personal thought is inspiration. How can I inspire people? What is it? What? Where's the lethargy coming from? Is it realistic? Are we trying to do too much? We don't have enough help. Am I just not able to inspire them? And um, pray to Krishna. Give me, please help me, because I cannot do this on my own. Hare Krishna. There's also some of you have the personality type where you want to do everything yourself you don't want anyone to do it but you and you don't know how to delegate and right now i have to delegate um, i forgot i have to send a message um 
because I have so much to do today because I leave tomorrow. And I forgot to send this message to Radha Priya. Okay, see, Jay Radha, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I'm delegating right now. Some things you cannot delegate, only you know how to do. But uh, it's also how much how much service can you do and still remain sattvic? That's the other consideration. And maybe you bite off more than you can chew and you need to learn how to engage people better, inspire them, and uh, be a little detached. You know, when you engage other people, it won't always get done perfectly, but they'll learn. I think you may have also meant that. Well, if you didn't, that's another thing. You know, engaging other people who don't do it as well as you do it. That, that's, yeah. Takes time, but you'll need to train them. Okay. So, I don't know if I answered all your questions. I, maybe I didn't understand. I have a, that's, I have a new joke for Jai Radhi. When she asks me a question, I'll say... You need to talk to Jai Radhe about this. Actually, that could be the answer for many questions. When Chaitanya Dasi asks a question, I go, Chaitanya Dasi, you need to talk to Chaitanya Dasi about that question. I think sometimes that is the answer to a lot of your questions. You just need to, you and Super Soul need to like sit down and work it out. You know, because sometimes it's easier to work out than you think, but you just got to stand back. So Annie is asking, is the only free will choice between Maya and Krishna? Well, sometimes we say that as a philosophical point, but you know, you had a choice what you were going to eat this morning, right? Sort of, kind of. I mean, you know, if you're addicted to sugar, you probably didn't, didn't have a lot of choice about whether or not to eat sweets, right? But whether it's a banana or a peach or a plum or grapes or mango, you have some choice, limited choice, of course. But Prabhupada's category, you know, putting these under two broad categories. You can choose Maya or you can choose Krishna. So now once you choose Krishna, you can choose what you're going to offer. Is it a mango or a banana? Papaya or a pineapple? So obviously you have those choices. You have choices, Annie, about what you're going to do with your life. You have choices about what you're going to think about, how you're going to relate, as we talked in the self-care course, how you are going to relate to yourself. So we do have these choices. But the broad categories are, are these choices being made under the influence of Maya or under the influence of Krishna? So it would be a disaster, and I've seen this disaster before, to think that we we don't have the choices we have. I think a lot of times we have it backwards. You know, we think we have choices that we don't have, and we think we don't have choices that we do have. Both are problems. So we talked about the first problem already. I think I can control something I can't. And the other problem is to think I can't control something that I can, or I can't control something that I should control. I can't control my mind. It's impossible. It's right there in the Gita. I have the pramana, the evidence of why I can't control my mind. It's right there. The mind is more difficult to control than the raging wind. It's right there. I cannot control my mind. Have you ever said that before? And use the Gita to support it? Yes? Well, I have some news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Krishna didn't say the mind was difficult to control. That was Arjuna who said it, who was at that point conditioned by Maya. Hello, pay attention to what you're reading. Krishna said in the next verse, it is possible. You probably missed that verse. You just caught on to the mind impossible to control. What's the use? My mind goes everywhere. I'm just going to keep chanting Hare Krishna. 
someday it'll all settle down. And in the next verse, Krishna says, no, I don't think so. It doesn't work exactly like that. It's not instant. You also have to work. I mean, it does work that way, but you have to work. It is, it might, indeed, the mind is difficult to control, but it is possible by practice. Abhyasa. You know this word, abhyasa? Abhyasa yoga. Abhyasa means practice, an important word. Sometimes devotees miss the word practice. They just think. Chant, dance, and take prasad, and sit back, and, you know, psh, the rocket ship goes. You just sit in the seat, and you go. No. You have to be doing something while you're sitting in the seat. Practice. So Krishna says, it's possible by practice and detachment. So now, have you ever seen somebody try to control something they can't control? and not control what they should control, like their mind and senses? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, that person in the mirror, they do it all the time. Yeah, I've seen it. I've lived through it. I know what you're talking about. Hare Krishna, right? So that, Annie, that is, those are the things we should control. Now, Annie might say, but... Don't we have karma? Say, okay, you have karma. You want a million, you want a million dollars in the lottery. That's your karma. Now what are you gonna do? You can end up like all the other people who won the lottery and buy a mansion and a Rolls Royce and six years later be bankrupt. Like, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give. Now, you want a lot of money. So you, I'm going to finish off the temple of Vedic understanding with that money. And then I'm going to open 200, 108 Goshalas. And then I'm going to build this and that. I'm like, yeah, okay, you could do that also. That's a choice. So <laughs> every, at every moment, you're, we are making choices. We have... We always, if if we don't think we have choices, um, our life is going to be very strange. At every moment, you have choices. But are you choosing Krishna or Maya? That's all. So those are the two categories. Within those categories, millions of choices. Correct? Does that make sense? Yeah. Millions of choices within those categories. Hare Krishna. Jai Prabhupada. Hmm. Okay. If you want to read about smoking, should we read that quote since you brought it up? I'm going to click on it and I will read it. You can click on it also. I was pro. I wonder if this was the same lecture I was at. Hold on. I want to see where it's from. It's not telling me. Chaitanya Dasi, do you see the lecture Los Angeles? Yeah, I was there. This is proof. Proof. Okay, the advertisement. Come on, here is cigarette. Cool. Make your brain cool. Laughter means probably. Whenever it says laughter, Nobody could laugh unless, if Prabhupada didn't laugh, you couldn't laugh because he would say, why are you laughing? You know that? Did you know that? Like sometimes Prabhupada would say something, someone would laugh, and it wasn't funny. And Prabhupada said, why are you laughing? It's not funny. So we, we were sure not to laugh unless Prabhupada laughed. So if it's just laughter, it means it was Prabhupada laughing. Okay, by smoking, laughter. Rascal, they think that I am smoking. How it can be cool. But they purchase cool. This is called Maya. He's smoking fire and he's becoming cool. Laughter. And the advertisement is going on. And the rascals are captivated by these advertisements and they smoke, become cool. Yes. Hare Krishna. So, um, we'll read a little more of the context. So this is what I'm going to read next is what came before that. The not karma bandha bhangsa satsanga. This is satsanga. 
you are hearing Bhagavatam in front of Krishna and practicing how to become pure. This is called satsanga. And a satsanga means this intoxication, illicit sex and drinking, so many things. A satsanga, the advertisement, quote, come on, here is cigarette cool. Make your brain cool by smoking. Rascal, they think I am smoking. How it can be cool? But they purchase cool. This is called maya. He's smoking fire. He's becoming cool. And the advertisement is going on. And the rascals are captivated by this advertisement and they smoke, become cool. Okay, Krishna. There's more to the lecture. But we'll thank you for that, Chaitanya Dasi. That was totally cool. Okay, you are so cool. And that was so cool. Okay. If you see that it's sometimes I'm funny and sarcastic, now you know where I got it from. It's bona fide disciplic succession. Okay, you have more to post, Chaitanya? Anandita is the cool one. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that, Anandita. Yeah, she's cool. She lives in London. It's always cold there. Okay, but this week's going to be nice, isn't it? I checked out the weather. When the sun shines in the UK and the weather's not cold, it's a beautiful place to be. Otherwise, it's a good place not to be, according to me. But all of you raised in the UK, you're used to it. You don't, you don't, um, doesn't bother you like it does us because we see more sun. So we're used to, we're used to the sun and we don't see it for long periods of time. It, it's like we can't, it's very difficult for us to live like that. So, Prabhupada says, a sane man will think, if this hand is ultimately controlled by Krishna, then, then it is meant for Krishna. This is a common sense understanding. I claim, this is my hand, this is my leg, this is my ear. Even a child will speak this way. If we ask a child, what is this? He will say, it's my hand. But regardless of what we claim, actually, it is not our hand. It is given to us. Because I wanted to use my hand in so many ways, Krishna has given it to me. All right, take this hand and use it. So it is a gift from Krishna. And therefore, a sane man always consciously thinks Whatever I have in my possession, beginning with my body and my senses, is actually not mine. I have been given all these possessions to use. And if everything ultimately, ultimately belongs to Krishna, why not use everything for Krishna? This is intelligence. And this is Krishna consciousness. Ladies and gentlemen, you know about car rentals, right? In, in England, you call it car hire, I believe. Is that right? Car hire? We call it car rental. When you pay money to get a car to use for a couple of days, and then you give it back. Car rental, car, car, hire, car hire. You can lease a car for two years like that and give it back. So um, we have just rented this body. It doesn't belong to us. And what's even more difficult to deal with is the mind. We're also renting the mind, and the mind doesn't belong to us. And we're very attached, very, very attached to our independence. Have you noticed? I want to do what I want, when I want, how I want, with who I want, and I don't want to listen necessarily to anybody and any authority. I just want to make my own decisions and um, that is your qualification for taking birth after birth after birth, just in case you didn't know that. That's why we're all here. Because we want to keep the mind separate from Krishna. Now, there's this beautiful meaning of the mantra, please quote Krishna, oh holy name, 
please bring my heart closer to you. So what does it mean to bring your heart closer to Krishna? It could mean many things, but in this context, it means make my heart, what's in my heart, what's in my mind, make that the same as your desire. Make that the same as what is in your heart and what is your mind. Make them one. So material life means make them two. Your desire, Krishna, and my desire. Sometimes they cross and sometimes they don't. But I am in, I am in charge of what I'm thinking about. I'm in charge of my mind. And I keep that under lock and key. And I use it as I want, how I want, when I want, with who I want, as much as I want. That's the problem. And when Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita, he says, Man mana. Your mind... Make it my mind. Put your mind on my mind. And ultimately that means put your mind in my desire. Sweet Chaitana Mano Bhishtam. When will the desire of Mahaprabhu be my desire? So that's the, the, real, the real issue with independence is that we have these thoughts and desires and we want to keep them locked up, confidential, and save them for a rainy day just in case. You know, I need some sense gratification. I can always go to the vault and pull out these desires and and engage them in case, you know, I'm not doing well. But bhakti means my desire is now Krishna's desire. So the body belongs to Krishna. Use it for him. But the mind is even harder. Now, it's it's hard just to use the body for Krishna. I'm rec I'm not going to minimize that at all. That's true. Sometimes people ask. Sometimes even devotees ask. You know about about sense gratification. You know, do we have to control our senses? And what is our answer? Yes, your senses are for Krishna's pleasure. What about controlling our sexual desire? That's the height of sensual pleasure. Do it for Krishna, have children for Krishna. That's the idea. The body, it's not like I wasn't given, the purpose of me getting this body ultimately was not to enjoy sense gratification, was to use it. It belongs to Krishna. I'm renting it. I can't destroy the apartment I'm renting. Can't do whatever I want in that apartment. You know, one time we, we had an apartment in San Diego and we turned it into a bakery and the whole ceiling was black from the heat and smoke. Um, it's not, wasn't meant to be a bakery. The landlord freaked out when he saw it. So it's like that. The body is meant, it's not, you know, we're renting this body and it's meant to be used under the guidance of the landlord. There are rules. Does that make sense to all of you? He's like, oh, Oh, what terrible news that was. Thought I could enjoy independently. And I'm not even supposed to think about anything independently. Yeah. So here's the good news. When you become Krishna conscious, all you will think about is what Krishna wants and what he desires. Because that's what love, that's what it means to love. You always the mother is always thinking about the welfare of the child, right? Isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's like a sad situation. The living entity, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, the original perfection of living entity is love of Krishna. And now the situation is so sad, Krishna has to come all the way down. Boom! He has to come all the way down to this world to tell us to love him. How pathetic is that? That love is e eternally within our heart. No matter what you get in this world, if you don't get love, you're not satisfied. It's what we want. And Krishna has to come down and beg for it. How sad is it? God has to beg you to love him. Is that embarrassing? He has to beg us to think of him. Is that embarrassing? Hare Krishna. Sat and Krishna's coming down for us. Wow. Just think about it. 
We should be going up there begging, please let me in. I'm sorry for what I've done. And he has to come down and forgive us before we even ask for forgiveness. Just don't worry, I forgive you. Just, just chant Hare Krishna. You don't have to worry about anything. Just try it on. You can surrender later. Just chant now. That's how bad it is. That's how bad we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bad news. We are bad. I don't know if you say that in England. It's an American expression. You know, like a devotee who always co co a devotee who always creates trouble. We'll say, and the devotee is coming. We'll go. Here's here comes bad news. Because that devotee always creates problems. So we're bad news for a Christian. That can be the title of this lecture. Chaitanya Dasgana. Who puts the titles on? Satya Rupa? Somebody does. I don't know who. Whoever does, you can tell them. Title of this talk is We're Bad News for Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Gaur Priya. Okay, Gaur Priya. We're Bad News for Krishna. I think in the last like 10 lectures, I gave titles, but I thought Chaitanya Dasi gave them. Anyway, if you didn't hear all the titles, you can ask her. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. So Krishna's, he's coming down and say, you know that body that I gave you? You know that mind I gave you? Well, I gave it to you. It's mine. So why are you using it for some other purpose? You should be using it for me. That's, that's Bhagavad Gita. In a nutshell, Hare Krishna. Okay, maybe, maybe, Gaurapri, we could change the title, Stop Being Bad News for Krishna. Yeah, that's better, right? Where bad news is like, it sounds like a dead end. Stop being bad news means we have a choice. Yeah, okay. I tried to root out in the self-care course, I tried to root out any reluctance or any doubt that loving Krishna, taking shelter of him completely, surrendering to him is going to cause any, any problem, any pain, any unhappiness, any difficulty for you. Whereas surrendering to Maya is what will cause all the problems. So if I say I'm afraid to surrender to Krishna, I have a question for you. Well, who then are you not afraid to surrender to? Because surrender is our nature. So whenever you say, I have doubts about surrendering to Krishna, that means you don't have doubts about surrendering to something else. Raise your hand if you have doubts about surrendering to pizza and ice cream. No hands. No hands up for that. What about doubts about surrendering to Krishna? Now, not everyone wants to put their hand up because it's embarrassing and it's not politically correct. But as a teacher and counselor, I will put my hand up for all of you. I know we all have reservations about surrendering to Krishna because if I surrender to Krishna, what if? And you have a list of what ifs. Hare Krishna. Sad situation, isn't it? So that's why Krishna comes down to beg us. So here's the question of the day for you. If you say, well, if I surrender to Krishna, I have this worry about A, B, or C. Okay. So who are you surrendering to if you don't surrender to Krishna? Because you have to surrender to someone. And obviously the answer is my mind and senses or my country my family, whatever. But surrender is, you can't avoid it. So all we're saying is when I have doubts about surrendering to Krishna, we're saying it's because I don't have doubts about surrendering to something else. Tangible, I can see it. The pizza and ice cream are in front of me. I can eat it. It tastes good. I get immediate, instant result. If I surrender to Krishna, how do I know what's going to happen? Maybe he'll take my husband away from me. Maybe he'll take all my money away from me. Maybe he'll send me to Siberia in January. 
to do sankirtan. I agree, who knows what he'll do to me if I surrender to him, right? Like, why, why do we think all, like Krishna is some kind of fascist leader who if he doesn't like you, you're that tough luck for you. You know, you're, you're, in a, you're in prison or worse than prison if he doesn't like you. Like, why do we think Krishna is like this? Well, what if I surrender to Krishna? He'll put me in a concentration camp. You know, that's like what we're thinking. Some something horrible, right? Krishna's not a fascist leader. Like it's a crazy thought, isn't it? Like Krishna's got nothing better to do than punish you. He's like, that's that's what he looks forward to. Like, what, what what's wrong with you? Don't think like that. Like, where, where? Where in the Gita does Krishna say, "Will it, you know, if you don't surrender to me, I'm getting the knife on you. No, Krishna says, I'm here, do whatever you want, but I'm here, I'm waiting, this is what, this is what I want, I want you, I'm here, but, you know, it's up to you, you have free will, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to force you to do anything. And you might say, but, but if I don't surrender, he'll, you know, I'll get in a car accident and he'll, he'll wake me up that I should surrender. Well, that's good then, isn't it? Because if you're running away from Krishna and the only way he can save you is a car accident, then that's good. Get in a car accident every day until you, until you come back. That would be good, right? So if we have that faith that Krishna will only do what's good for me, and even if it's bad, it would only be because it's good, then you can, you know, put your hands up and say, okay. Take it away, Krishna, I'm all yours. And that's the day, ladies and gentlemen, that's the day you'll be happy. And if you're not happy, now you know why. Because you're holding on to something and trying to keep that from Krishna. Yes? Do you ever think, if I just have a lot of money, I'll be happy? Well, I hate to give you the bad news. You will be more comfortable. But unless you use that money for Krishna, it will not make you happy. It will make you comfortable. You'll be less stressed because you can afford things that you can't afford now. But it, that money cannot make you happy if you think it's your money. If you don't use it for Krishna, it can't make you happy. And if you have more money than you need, then use it in devotional service and you'll see how happy that money makes you. I, I saw this video. Uh, there's an a Islamic organization that helps poor people and they make videos to raise money. And one of the ways they raise money is by showing how the money is used. So they, they go up to people and say, I have $500, they're in a store, I have $500 here. I'll give you this $500 if you'll go shopping in the store, if we go shopping together, I think, in the store to buy things that homeless people need and give them to them. Or I'll give you $100 to buy for yourself. What do you think is going to make people happier? You always buy things for yourself. How happy has that made you? Just makes you want to buy more things, right? Isn't it? Yeah, so, you you know, 500, you know, I'm giving you $500 and you're going to Vrindavan and with this $500, I want you to buy things that all the poor Vaishnavas need and you go out and distribute them, you know, new saris for all the, for all the widows and, you know, new dhotis for the sadhus and sweet rice for everybody and shoe, new shoes for the poor people, whatever. You'd be way happier, don't you think, than you'd be if you spent that on yourself? Like, how many pairs of shoes do you have? And and if you count them up, if you have 10 pairs and I only have five, does that mean you're twice as happy as I am because you have twice as many shoes? I don't think so. I have too many shoes. I've got, I've been given, I've given shoes. I'd actually dry, I, Honestly, for me, it makes me unhappy. The more I have, the more unhappy I am. I like to have little, but that's just me. 
Anyway, you understand the principle. Krishna Premi said, yesterday one devotee told me she was terrified that Krishna will take away the lives of her family members to make her truly detached. Well, uh, who said he would? I mean, of course, your parents, they will well, uh, they will be taken away most likely while you're still alive, but um, that's all the more reason to be Krishna conscious because these things are going to be taken away and if we're Krishna conscious, we'll be able to deal with them. And so any free choice also is how do you deal with all these things? What choices do you make in response to what is going on? That You have that choice also. Have you noticed that sometimes you make bad choices when things go bad? You choose, you choose to go down instead of up? Like, like, why? Why did you do that? Krishna has given you unlimited instructions to go up, and you decide, I'm going to forget every one of those instructions that go down and lament. Why? What's wrong? Like, you have a bank full of instructions. Just go to the bank and pull them out and spend them. Nah, I'm just going to go live on the street and suffer. That That's like, it's really weird. Don't you think it's weird? Something difficult happens, you forget everything Krishna says, and you just sit and bathe in, in um, what's the word? when you feel sorry for yourself? I forgot the word. Self something. What's the word I'm looking for? Tell me. What's the word? There's a word for it. Jairate, you must know the word. Self-pity, yeah. Wallow in despair. Self-pity is what I was looking for, yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't question. Um, this is how I always thought okay the material world is a material world you know what it's like you want your life to be great you don't want to have problems everything's smooth you want your family you want your family and friends to live for like 5,000 years so you know just you know never get old and like that and you know you you want to be strong and healthy and beautiful and happy and live nicely and all that but it doesn't always work out that way. So, because it doesn't work out that way, so Krishna gives instructions. Like, here's some instruction, you know? Like, it doesn't work out that way, but with these instructions, you can deal with it. And so, the if we're foolish, if we're extremely foolish, we'll think, no, I have to manipulate the material world so it works out, so I don't have to need, use those instructions because everything's going to go well. Have you ever thought like that? I'm just going to make everything go well. Then I don't have to worry about the Bhagavad Gita because I won't need it because everything's going to be good. Hare Krishna. Oh, my God. Where Krishna is saying, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, you're my devotee. Yeah, your life's going to be great and I'll take care of you and like that. But you will get old. You, Your friends will die. Your family will die. You know, somebody's going to run a red light someday and somebody's going to get in an accident and etc. These things will happen. But I've given you all the instructions to be able to deal with it. That's the real value. Amber is saying, Krishna, you, can you keep the instructions and just make my life perfect? That would be better. Yeah, that's our problem. Isn't it? You agree? Keep your instructions and just send me money, right? Oh, that, that'll be enough. That'll be fine. Hare Krishna. Oh, my Govinda. Okay. Well, do you have any questions or we're already in question mode now or should we officially go into question mode? We can wait a minute to go officially into question mode. If nobody has any questions in a minute, we can uh, continue. Damianti says, Krishna loves us so much when we surrender it is to our desires, always be prepared for what we pray for. Yeah. Watch out what you pray for. It might happen. So I, 
my life is dedicated to convincing you that the greatest thing, the happiest thing, the most beautiful thing you can do is to give up that independence. Then I'm promising you, if you do, everything will be better. And if you don't, everything will be worse. So chew on that for a while and see, see what happens. But then if you say, well, how do I know? You know how you know? How do you know something tastes good? You look at it, you smell it, it smells good, looks good. Other people are eating it, they say it's good. Okay, I'll eat it. Yeah, okay. So look at Krishna's words, smell them, ask, look at the people who actually follow it and see how happy they are. Like, okay, let me try it. And then I jump in the cold water and go, Oh, that wasn't so bad at all. Actually, it's quite nice. Actually, I feel refreshed. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Dasha says, Dasha. So if I'm afraid to lose um, SMTH, what is that? We should think that we will lose it anyway. But we are lucky that we have instructions how to cope with it. Yeah. We'll lose whatever, you know. That's the something. So if we're afraid to lose something, yeah, I'm not into it. I never abbreviate when I type. I never learned that science. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I meant. So the real, you know, when you become a devotee, the real value isn't that Krishna is going to just make everything great for you. Although for most devotees, they have good lives and he takes care of them nicely. And the more we're Krishna conscious, generally the more he takes care of us. Care of us. But the real wealth is that we have the instructions that will enable us to deal whatever life sends in a way that we can remain stable, peaceful, and happy. What greater wealth is that? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Nice point, huh? Simple. I mean, this is just how I always felt. Hare Krishna. Question from Shalini. When we see elevated devotees suffering too much materially, how should we take that? What to speak of us? Um, there, I don't, I don't know the devotees. So if I knew the devotee, I could, I could say something because it may be due to some something they've neglected taking care of that caused that problem. But. When Prabhupada, I mean, we look at Prabhupada, he had to undergo difficulties with his health and uh, he had a, a body and that's the nature of the body. So Prabhupada said, you know, it's going to happen to all of you. You're all going to get old and something's going to happen. So some of these things are unavoidable. And sometimes you don't know why, but it can be due to how we're thinking how we're living, some past karma, or something that Krishna is giving the devotee that will actually help the devotee. Or maybe, you know, the devotee wants to go back to Godhead, ASAP, and Krishna is just breaking their body down, like fast. And he gets some strange disease that only one out of eight billion, six hundred million people get, and they just go to sleep and they die. And they wake up in Leela. So sometimes it's like that. You're just looking at one side of it and you think it's bad, but maybe Krish, Krishna um, knew what they wanted. Maybe Krishna is missing them. They He wants them back. There could be so many reasons. I mean, after all, you can't go back if you don't die, right? So you have to die somehow. So dying, if you're going to go back to Godhead, dying is not a problem. Everyone wants to go back to Godhead and nobody wants to die. Go we'll figure that one out. Who wants to die? Raise your hand. Okay, imagine I have a gun. I have a gun right now and I can kill you. How many are you going to raise your hand? Yeah. Only one. 
Okay, next time I see you, I'll, I'll fulfill your desire. No, I won't. I will not do that. How many of you want to go back to Godhead? All of us, yeah. So maybe you didn't notice that you have to die before you can go back to Godhead. Oh, I never thought of that. Mm, okay, so dying is not so bad after all. Because how are you going to go back to Godhead if you don't die? Different ways of looking at things. So Chaitanya Dasi says, we've got a comment from Kaliya. Who says, thoughts on this? There are no problems in life, rather all opportunities for creativity. Yeah, the material world is really a good place. Um, it's a good good place for learning how to be Krishna conscious because there's so many things uh, that help us. Even, even the bad things help us. Everything helps us here. Because it's not perfect. That's why it helps us. And the only way you get complete happiness is by being Krishna conscious. That's why it helps us. If you look outside the world, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Okay, Shruti says. Shruti Chaturvedi. Wow, have you read all the four Vedas and lived up to your name? Shruti means to hear, and Chatur means four, and Vedi means the Vedas. With a name like that, you have to read all, read all. Well, if you read, if you chant Hare Krishna, then Shastra says you've surpassed study of all the Vedas. So your name can be Hari Nam Dasi also. Same thing. I was listening to a class recently, and the speaker said that Brahma was instructed by Krishna to put distress between every two atoms. <laughs> I was confused by this statement. Why would Krishna instruct Brahma to put so much distress I always thought it is us, the jivas, creating our miseries because we choose to turn away from Krishna. Well, it's true, but once you turn away from Krishna, if there's not distress between the atoms, then you'll think everything's cool. Who needs Krishna? But because when you turn away, there's distress, you turn around again. So it's just a springboard to pull you back. I can guarantee you, Shruti, that... If there wasn't distress in this world, not one of us would have become devotees. There would be absolutely no reason. We might have been pious. We might have liked to chant Hare Krishna like that, do some yoga asanas and meditate, but actually surrender to Krishna? Unless you've been practicing for a thousand lifetimes, it just wouldn't happen. You have experience in your life of giving up on something only because it doesn't work out. But if it did, you'd never give up on it, even if it's not good for you. You have any of that experience? Yeah. Krishna knows our psychology, so he created the world in a way that if you try to forget him, it's not going to be pretty. Chaitanya Dasi, is that okay? Shruti, is that? Yeah. Um, I could elaborate. I've elaborated on this in other classes. But the material world is like, it's like you try to go away from Krishna and it pushes you. But if you're a devotee, it'll just keep pushing you back. Like you can't get away from him because the situations of this world will, will bring you to the point of dissatisfaction or some level of anxiety that can only be experienced by not being Krishna conscious. And that will just, that comparison to the experiences of Krishna consciousness, they'll then always be there. And so you'll feel, I got, I got what I wanted materially, but I feel empty. There's that, there's that atom of misery in between in everything I got. That's a really a nice example. See, you can have a lot of money, but there's an atom of misery between all the all the bills. You have a big house, but there'll be atoms of misery there. You can have like but there's atoms. It's built into the system. But as I was saying, for a devotee, even though that's true, they're blissful, they're happy, Krishna takes care, everything's everything's great. And the last statement, so inspiring to hear wonderful examples of advanced devotees like Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj said, it doesn't get any better than this. While his body was breaking down completely. Wow, yeah. And there it is. I think that's the 
cream of this talk. It doesn't get better any better than this. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sokai Manandi.